Now, from the area's leader in live local news, this is WYLN News, the area's number one source of live local news and information in Luzerne, Schuylkill, Carbon, and Columbia counties. WYLN News starts now. Good evening, and thank you for joining us on WYLN News. I'm Julia Wiegand. State police have identified the victim's body that was found at the Francis E. Walter Dam on Tuesday. According to reports, 16-year-old Devin Janvier of Tobihanna was swimming with his friends and family yesterday when he was observed jumping from a 20 to 30-foot high cliff. He was then seen struggling in the water, where multiple people tried to help him. Dive teams recovered Janvier's body, and he was pronounced dead at the scene by the Luzerne County Deputy Coroner. State police said both the official cause and manner of death are still pending. A multi-state manhunt continues for the University of Connecticut senior wanted for murdering two people. Police believe he is now in the Hagerstown, Maryland area. Earlier today, state police warned people in Lackawanna County and northeastern Pennsylvania to be on the lookout for 23-year-old Peter Manfredonia, who's considered armed and dangerous. Manfredonia is accused of killing two people in Connecticut and kidnapping a woman, who was later located Sunday near Patterson, New Jersey. Police believe that he was driving a 2012 black Hyundai Santa Fe with a PA license plate. The vehicle has since been found abandoned by investigators near a Sheets in Chambersburg. He's believed to then have taken an Uber to Hagerstown. Manfredonia is described as a 6'4 white male weighing around 240 pounds and was last seen wearing a white t-shirt and dark colored shorts, carrying a large duffel bag believed to contain multiple firearms. Police are warning the people to not approach him, but rather call 911 immediately. Carbon County authorities are investigating the deaths of three people found inside a Lansford home Tuesday afternoon. Police were dispatched to the 600 block of East Patterson Street, where a man, woman, and young girl were found dead. Authorities said the incident was isolated to the residents and no danger to the public. Two young boys were also found in the home and were said to be unharmed, later being released to a family member. The investigation continues as autopsies are scheduled to be done by the end of this week. A toddler's parents were two of four people arrested for causing his death in Carbon County back in February. The parents, Brittany Burke and Gage Dutch, faced charges of involuntary manslaughter, child endangerment, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Anthony Pudva and Rebecca Walk faced the same charges. The three-year-old's death was attributed to a drug overdose. All four admitted to using heroin at an apartment in Nesquahoning, where the child was found unresponsive. They allegedly left the drugs in an area where the child was exposed to them. All four were denied bail and currently sit behind bars. Hazleton City Council approved the first reading of an ordinance on wage taxes. The taxes are part of the city's Act 47 financial recovery plan and supports the general fund and pension plans. The latest ordinance keeps the earned income tax rate at 1.75% for residents and increases the non-residential rate from 1.85 to 2%. The resident rate would be reconstructed later in the year to move a larger portion of revenue into pension plans. The city has to seek court approval every year to increase the tax beyond limits set by law and plans to petition the court for the new rates June 4th. Once the judge rules on the petition, council can then vote on second and final readings. The earned income tax generates nearly $5 million in revenue for the city. As restrictions slowly begin to lift and the stay-at-home order ends Friday, Luzerne County remains cautiously optimistic about the reopening process. The county will be moving into the yellow phase this Friday, May 29th, and County Manager David Pedri told Council that the most important thing to get across to its residents is that yellow does not at all mean green. Social distancing measures will be enforced and safety precautions will be in effect as businesses and county offices begin to reopen their doors. County voters who have applied for mail-in ballots will also receive them this week and can return them by 8 p.m. for the deadline of Tuesday, June 2nd. 
A New Jersey man's behind Luzerne County bars following a shooting incident in Wilkes-Barre. Officers were called to Cary Avenue Saturday night for a report of shots fired. There, two males fled the scene, but were later found hiding under a porch and a kayak. One of the suspects was a juvenile that was listed as missing out of New Jersey. The other man, 18-year-old Amir Lawrence Younger of Newark, was charged with carrying a firearm without a license, drug possession, and resisting arrest. He was taken to Luzerne County Prison for lack of $35,000 bail. Pennsylvania's government began advancing a temporary no new taxes budget plan Tuesday to maintain the state's current spending levels. The main budget bill barely passed in the House, but did pass in Senate with bipartisan support from the Appropriations Committee. The spending legislation is expected to be followed by budget-related legislation that's negotiated behind closed doors and another bill. That bill distributes nearly $2 billion in federal coronavirus emergency aid to nursing homes, agricultural programs, individual counties, and more. However, it's only guaranteed for five months. A decline in state aid for those services in the last seven months of the fiscal year could force counties to foot a larger share of that bill. Many are getting back to a somewhat normal daily routine, which could have a negative impact on family pets. WYLAN's Julie Stefanovich has the details on separation anxiety in animals. During the pandemic, people spent more and more time at home with their loved ones and their family pets. Now, as many head back to work, fur babies may miss the quality time and long hours spent playing and hanging out with their owners. Dogs and cats find themselves home alone and feeling stressed out, longing for the companionship with their humans. Separation anxiety in pets is an actual condition that causes some animals to act out. Signs of the disorder include vocalization, destructive chewing, and soiling around the house. But there are things that you can do to help ease your pet's anxiety. You can give the animal any kind of soothing supplements like CBD oil um, or put them in a crate with a blanket over it. That helps them feel comforted. Um, any kind of calming rescue remedy, any kind of calming supplements will help with separation anxiety. Or if you can get them a nanny to check in on them, that helps too. It's also good to establish a predictable routine. Start out by leaving your dog or cat alone for five minutes at a time. And when you go away for longer periods, leave a radio or a TV turned on. It's important to be patient and not give up on them. And remember that separation anxiety is not an uncommon issue in pets. A vet check will also ensure that there is nothing physically wrong with your best pal. Reporting for WYLN News, I'm Julie Stefanovich. Thanks, Julie. Coming up on WYLA News, gas prices on the rise. Plus, we got a new middle district judge. But first, we'll take a look at our five-day forecast brought to you by the WYLA Weather Kids. We'll be right back. My name is Gio, and I'm three years old. The weather is going to be tomorrow rainy, so get your umbrella. Bye. First, Earl Granville fought and sacrificed for his country. Then he inspired our entire nation. That video right there, viewed more than 8 million times. When I lost my leg, the community here in Northeastern Pennsylvania was so good to me, and I want to show my gratitude, and that's why I'm running for Congress. Earl will relentlessly fight to protect our Northeastern PA conservative values. I realize I can't do this alone. I need your help. I'm Earl Granville, and I approve this message. All Care Home Care, providing quality in home care since 1986. Call and see how their team of licensed physical therapists, skilled nurses, speech, and occupational therapists can provide you with exceptional service in the comfort of your own home. They also offer dietitian, home health aid, and medical social worker services. You have a choice in your health care. For safe, friendly, qualified care, call All Care Home Care today and let their team begin taking care of you and your loved ones.
From the bottom of our hearts, the WYLN-TV35 family would like to say thank you to all essential workers for your service to our community and for keeping us safe. Luzerne County officials announced where voters can drop off mail-in ballots to ensure they're counted in time for the June primary election. The three locations include the Hazleton and Wilkes-Barre Post Offices and Penn Place Building. Ballots can be dropped off at the service counters during the days and times listed on your screen right now. Ballots must be received at the County Bureau of Elections Office by 8 p.m. June 2nd. Just as gas prices seem to reach some record lows, we saw a more than five cent per gallon increase within the past week, bringing the national average up to $1.96 per gallon. Gas price escalations are primarily caused by demand, which is now increasing since the nation's slowly loosening restrictions brought on by the coronavirus pandemic. As we gradually approach the new normal nationwide, the price of crude oil and gas prices are pushing higher, since one factors the other. As long as COVID-19 cases continue to drop over time and the county reopens, it's only a matter of time before the average price hits the $2 a gallon mark again, which could happen as early as this week. Effective Monday, U.S. District Judge John E. Jones III will become the Chief Judge of the Middle District of Pennsylvania. The 64-year-old Pottsville resident, whose courtroom's in Harrisburg, succeeds Christopher C. Connor, another Harrisburg-based Republican, as head of the 33-county 8-judge district. He will assume his post at a critical time in the district. Amid the pandemic, senior U.S. District Judges A. Richard Caputo and James M. Munley passed away in March. Jones is honored to head his court and is said to be up for the wonderful challenge. The Wilkes-Barre Family YMCA plans to reopen child care for essential workers starting Monday. That includes child care for health care employees, emergency workers, grocery store staff, and more. In addition, the Summer Scholars Program will open June 8th, and starting June 15th, the Summer Off Program and Summer Day Camp at YMCA Camp Carsage will open as well. The Wilkes-Barre Family YMCA plans to follow guidelines recommended by the CDC and Department of Health. Coming up on Iron Triangle's News Choice, we talk MISC and its coronavirus link on this Wellness Wednesday in Community and You. Plus, Butler Township's solar energy farm plans have not been eclipsed. Stay with us. seen university advertising student like me pitching you the same old ideas but i'm not gonna do that instead i'm gonna tell you what you can do with a penn state degree you can help anyone go anywhere create and with 20 campuses to choose from you'll always feel at home look penn state is amazing but your best years are just beginning come find out for yourself Life is different, but it hasn't stopped. So when curiosity turns into a rash, an LVHN video visit is just a click away. No matter what you need, whether it's a phone call with a primary care provider or a specialist, or you just need advice on your health, we have a virtual care option that's right for you. And the best part? You'll always be seen by a Lehigh Valley Health Network provider. Visit lvhn.org virtual to learn more. There's no better place to shoot than Whitetail Preserve. Their skeet trap and sporty clay fields are professionally designed and all stations are handicapped accessible. Whitetail Preserve has resident shooting instructors certified by the NRA in shotgun, rifle, pistol, home safety, and personal protection in the home. Whitetail can also cater any size event, whether it be a private party, corporate event, or wedding. Call 570-455-4251 extension 1378 for more information. Welcome to Community and Youth here on WYLN. I'm Julia Wiegand, and today we are on location on Broad Street at LVPG Pediatrics Center with Dr. Pradeep Adumala, yes. who is a pediatrician, here to safely, from a social distance, 
talk with us a little bit today about a recent scare that's been all over the media lately. It's relatively new and it has a long name, multi-system inflammatory syndrome, otherwise known as MISC. And it's also being connected to children and COVID-19. Yes. Now, can you give us an explanation about what it is and where the connection lies? So the interesting question is, it has, because the term itself names is multi-system, because it involves multiple uh, organs. So usually they found out in a couple of cases in New York and in some uh, European countries like UK, they found a couple of uh, symptoms with high-grade fever and uh, unusual abdominal pain with vomiting and diarrhea, uh, with uh, cr crackled lips with uh, bloodshot eyes, which is like a not any purulent, any boogie, not a boogie eyes. And there is enlarged uh, glands in the neck area with unusual tiredness. Uh, these are all the symptoms present in the children in a age group between 10 to 18, something like that. So they found out uh, these kids were going to really uh, like low blood pressure and tachycardia. So they need a really intensive care treatment. So this, when they did look at the plasma of the patients who has have this, they found out the COVID-19 antibodies. So what we come across in a study is, the, what uh, we are come across is, the pa patient, pediatric patient populations are not having exact COVID-19 symptoms in the, when they have real symptoms. But after six to eight weeks, the body, some, some kids, it's not all the kids, some kids may have an immune response with all these symptoms. So they are trying to say that these symptoms are confused with Kawasaki disease. Because Kawasaki disease have pretty much same symptoms, but th that Kawasaki disease have no uh, link to COVID-19. And uh, Kawasaki usually affects uh, the same presentation with the, the high-grade fevers with the cracker lips, with the strawberry tongue, and enlarged glands in the neck area with the rash, and uh, it can affect the heart also. So that was the reason uh, they, when they found out the plasma in the patients with the symptom, they found a COVID-19 antibodies. So this is called multisystemic inflammatory syndrome in the children. Now, along the lines of, I'm going to call it MISC, because yes, it's a lot shorter is. and a lot more simple. Once these children are in the hospital, how do health professionals treat MISC and what's the recovery time usually for a pediatric patient? It's a very tough to say because to be honest, early identification of the symptom complex and a proper team care with the intensive care unit and aggressive treatment for what exactly the symptoms are. If they have low blood pressure, they can support with the fluids. And if they need an issue with the heart, you can support with the medications to support the heart. So it depends. Uh, some kids recover really good with the excellent supportive care team. Sometimes if it is a late presentation, then it could be a little bit longer recovery period or possibly death. Now, earlier you mentioned the phrase that not all children. Yes. So what are the chances of a child developing MISC? And on a darker note, what is the mortality rate? See, it's hard to say which children is going to affect. Any children can be affected. The point here we are to understand is uh, COVID-19 when affected children, sometimes in the, when they have the infection of COVID-19, they may not have symptoms at all. But after six to eight weeks, some kids, it's not all the kids, uh, they get this immune response and which can affect the multiple body organs with, uh, with a fever, rash, all this stuff. So it is hard to say which, are, which children can get it, but if they have other comorbidic conditions like diabetes, asthma, like if kids are in any immunosuppressant medication, their prognosis will be a little bit hard, a little bit uh, poor, I can say that. Well, at this time and what everyone knows so far about this relatively new scare out there, what are some tips and advice that you give to parents that feel that their child is under the, following under the criteria that they might have MISC or might be developing MISC? So 
all all fevers are not MISC. All fevers with rash are not MISC. You have to look at the symptoms and how the children is developing. If you see, see a child who is complaining unusual belly pain with vomiting and diarrhea and high grade fever and he is like lethargic. So you have to think about it. But we have to look at because there are a lot of kids with vomiting and diarrhea can present with no fevers. So it does not mean that it is COVID-19 MISC. So you have to look at the symptom complex and talk to the provider. Uh, even though if unable to come, talk to the on the phone, just let them know what exactly they are coming across. And uh, the, that way we can Id identify earlier. So we can uh, inform the intensivist uh, so that our ER physicians to do early supportive care. That's going to help much more. Now to bring this all together, is there one thing that you really want parents watching right now to take home about MISC? It's a, my opinion is it's to let the parents know this can happen even though your kid is not affected with COVID-19. COVID-19 in children is not having any symptoms, but we are not doing tests on the children much. Sometimes they may be positive and we don't know yet. And after six to eight weeks, this can symptoms develop. So you have to be very, very alert, vigilant, and inform the provider and uh, contact the provider as early as possible. Thank you so much for being with us today, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to everybody watching out there. Remember, if you feel that your child falls under the criteria of developing MISC, please call your pediatrician. They will let you know what to do from there. We'll see you next time on Wellness Wednesday here on WYLA. First, Earl Granville fought and sacrificed for his country. Then he inspired our entire nation. That video right there, viewed more than eight million times. When I lost my leg, the community here in Northeastern Pennsylvania was so good to me. And I want to show my gratitude. And that's why I'm running for Congress. Earl will relentlessly fight to protect our Northeastern PA conservative values. I realize I can't do this alone. I need your help. I'm Earl Granville and I approve this message. SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric Mr. Slim ductless heating and cooling system. Mr. Slim systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and Train Comfort Specialist, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Tune in every Sunday night on WYLN from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. for hard-hitting, high-flying, non-stop action as only Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling High Voltage can bring you. That's Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling every Sunday night on WYLN. I'll see you in the ring. How you doing, everybody? This is Ricardo Santos from Yay Zapata. That's right, Yay Zapata in the house. That's what's up, that's what's up. Meet Ricardo Santos. This is one of his Mexican food trucks. He is not a chef. I'm not a chef. But he makes amazing Mexican food. And he has joined the WYLN family with his own cooking show, Cooking with Jay Zapata. Wilkes-Barre Mayor George Brown announced the cancellation of an annual 4th of July tradition. The city's old-fashioned 4th of July celebration in Kirby Park suffered a pandemic postponement. The Strawberry Festival set for June 18th was also canceled, and changes will be coming this year to the farmer's market. There will be no prepared food or non-prepared food item vendors. The market scheduled to open June 25th. Plans are underway for a solar energy farm in Butler Township. The solar farm was first proposed back in fall of 2018, which would be large enough to power 9,000 homes. The township, which thought the interest faded, was contacted three weeks ago about a zoning change along Prospect Road in the southeast corner of the township. However, 
Supervisors have tabled the request until July in hopes that it can be a public meeting for the sake of the 80 plus neighbors living within 200 feet of the proposed area that the solar energy district would overlay. Back in 2018, the company said noise would come from motors that turn solar panels with the sun, fans, and a substation. Solar panels would stand 8 to 20 feet high, and a 7-foot high fence would surround them. Local businesses reopening this Friday, May 29th, are encouraged to take the Luzerne County Ready Pledge to prep for when the county transitions to yellow. The Luzerne County Ready Pledge was launched by local officials and organizations to show the commitment made by businesses of all sizes to protect the health, safety, and well-being of their employees and customers. Guidelines include following proper social distancing, sanitation, and cleaning protocols. Local businesses can walk through the steps needed to become Luzerne County Ready online at luzernecountyready.org. And that's the news. Remember, the source matters now more than ever. Catch all the latest on our Facebook page or wylandtv.com, where you'll find the real facts about COVID-19 from LVHN or who's open for business. Stay with us. A look at today's weather is next right here on WYLN-TV. It's okay that everybody ignores me when I drive. It's fine, because I get a safe driving bonus check every six months I'm accident free. Because I don't use my cell phone when I'm driving, even though my family does and leaves me all alone. Here's something else. I don't share it with mom. Right, mom? I have a brand new putter you don't even know about. It's awesome. Safe driving bonus checks only from Allstate. Switching to Allstate is worth it. Visit your local Allstate agent, the McNeilis Agency in Hazleton at 1092 North Church Street, or in hometown in the hometown village square. All Care Home Care, providing quality in home care since 1986. Call and see how their team of licensed physical therapists, skilled nurses, speech, and occupational therapists can provide you with exceptional service in the comfort of your own home. They also offer dietitian, home health aid, and medical social worker services. You have a choice in your health care. For safe, friendly, qualified care, call All Care Home Care today and let their team begin taking care of you and your loved ones. 